I think we should stop training doctors right now. <laughs> that's an opinion that's probably drained the blood of the face of every dean of medicine across the country. Um, and it's an opinion that doesn't come from me. It comes from a funny place, really. It comes from a small group of computer scientists, experts in a field called artificial intelligence. And they're telling us that work is about to change, that the jobs we do today are not the jobs that will exist in 10 or 20 years' time. What's interesting is they think medicine are one of those jobs that might disappear. Uh, so um, Jeffrey Hinton, who was uh, one of the founders of a field called Deep Learning, which is behind much of this AI boom, said just a couple of years ago, it's quite obvious we should stop training radiologists. So why the enthusiasm? Why this gung-ho belief? It's because AI is already part of your lives. You may not realize it. If you have a modern generation smartphone, it's already got neural chips inside it. The apps you use every day, um, Twitter, uh, Facebook, whatever, they all are optimized through AI to give you a personalized feed. Everyone's feed is different. And so, as you can imagine, um, there's a lot of money involved, billions of dollars. So all the big companies, the Apples, Googles, Amazons, are all investing heavily in the AI space. And it's not surprising they think healthcare is the next big place for AI. Um, what's interesting is that uh, there's so much money invested in this that the dialogue has gone from, let's build tools to help doctors to we might replace doctors. And it's not just radiologists who are in the, in the line. It's um, ophthalmologists, dermatologists, pathologists, anybody who does imaging. So are there any medical students today in the audience? Um, probably, probably good if they're not here. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is uh, the cover of a book that um, summarizes the first 10 years of research in this field of medical AI. It was actually it was the first book I ever bought when I started my research in the area. Um, it was published in 1984, uh, which says something both about the book and me, I guess. Um, and, and I can tell you, back in 1984, we were saying exactly the same thing, that doctors are going to be made redundant. Clearly, that hasn't happened just yet. So let's think about, I guess, um, where we are with medical AI. It's very clear uh, that um, big changes are occurring. Every week, dozens of papers are published, usually demonstrating that the technology is equal to or superior to humans. Um, so, for example, making diagnoses, um, being able to suggest personal treatments for you, or making predictions, predicting things like how long are you going to be in hospital, when are you going to go home? Or, or quite spookily, when will you die? We're very good at predicting death in hospital for some reason. So the biggest change, as I've sort of hinted at, has been in the area of imaging. So we know now that so-called deep learning or machine learning algorithms really are changing the way we interpret images. So whether it's MRIs, CTs, X-rays, ultrasounds, again, equal to or above radiology performance all the time. So that sounds like the death knell for, for radiology, doesn't it? But I want to suggest to you that these AIs are brilliant idiots. Let me suggest to you now that, um, well, let's go through actually four classic tasks um, that we test AIs on. Uh, and this is, these are tasks that would be requiring some kind of intelligence. The first one here is what I call the Where's Wally task. Can you pick a named object in an image? And the red line is, um, human performance. And you can see that blue line is, over the years, the steady improvement of the best AIs. It's very clear AI is better than us at picking objects in images. So if you're worried about face recognition and software, you should be, because uh, there's a reason. Here's another task, which is speech recognition. This is not speech understanding. This is just dictation, the sort of technology behind Siri or Alexa. You can see that AI is sort of on par now with humans, but only for single speaker. Once you put two speakers in the room, AI gets discombobulated. So, so far, so good. I'm still scared as a doctor. Here comes the cavalry. <laughs> this task is question answering. So this is sometimes easy. You know, what's the capital of Argentina? You can probably just look that up, pattern detection. But some questions are hard, aren't they? Like, um, does the UK have a functioning parliament? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, so that, to answer that would require you know, some intelligence and understanding of the world. And it gets even more complicated in a task we call visual question answering. So remember I said AIs are fantastic at detecting objects, so they can tell you in a picture that's a cow, that's a car. What they can't do very well at all is tell you why they're all assembled and what's going on in the picture. So, brilliant idiots. So let me summarise the state of the art. Today's AI is fantastic at solving single, simple tasks. So imagine if it's a radiology AI, it might be brilliant at detecting TB in a lung. It's not a radiologist. It just does that one job very, very well. And so this idea of the artificial general intelligence, or AI, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger come to save or, or harm us, <laughs> is a long way away. It's not state-of-the-art. It's beyond state-of-the-art. We don't know what it means to build something like that. That's far away. OK, so let's think about this new world, this new world where we have AI, which is pretty good at lots of things, and we have humans who are good at different things. So it should be a marriage made in heaven, you'd think, um, each having weaknesses and strengths but complementing each other. But in that world, even without technology, there are other challenges that we need to face. Um, and the first one is, is one of ethics, the ethical use of artificial intelligence. Uh, some of you might read science fiction and remember this here. This is Asimov's first law of robotics. What does he say? He says a robot shouldn't harm a human being or through inaction lead to a human being harmed. Seems very reasonable basic rule even for AI. The problem in healthcare is that we break that rule every day because we have to. So, for example, imagine um, that algorithm that predicts your risk of death in hospital. Imagine that it's now advising a doctor what to do. And the algorithm says that Mrs. Jones is 95. She's going to die in two days. She's at the end of life. What we need to do probably for her and her family is withdraw treatment and give her a dignified ending. That breaks that rule, because we've allowed somebody to come to harm and die. Or what if that algorithm does the opposite, and it says, look, I think you should keep on treating this person. We're going to be causing harm, unnecessary treatment, maybe pain. So you can start to see that what seems like an easy question of ethics becomes very tangled in healthcare, because we make very difficult decisions. So this whole area of ethics and AI is not one just in healthcare. We struggle with it with the military, for example. What is the appropriate use of AI in the military? Another separate and very complicated question. Anyway, ethics is our first challenge. The next one is a very human challenge. Uh, and this is the challenge of trust and trust in technology. And the reality is that we're actually very trusting as humans, aren't we? We're very trusting of each other, usually. <laughs> and we're very trusting of the technologies we have. So who hasn't used the GPS and taken a route that in your gut you know <laughs> is the wrong direction? Yeah? But, but you've listened to that smart technology. I mean, there are stories of people traveling hundreds of kilometers because the GPS said to. Um, what about now semi-autonomous vehicles? So these are cars who have AI on board that are pretty good at navigating the way. But if you've got a Tesla, the manual says, keep your hands on the wheel. This is a driver's assistant. There will be, there will be circumstances in which you will need to intervene. You need to stay in the loop and stay active. And there are plenty of stories of people who have come to harm. So there's one story that comes to mind immediately of a gentleman who was busy watching Harry Potter on the DVD in the car. Um, instead of holding the wheel, not even paying attention, sadly, he had an accident, he died. So what is this? This is something that we as researchers have a name for. And we call it automation bias. And what it means is that we, when technology works pretty well, tend to be over-trusting. We over-trust, and we step back, and we're not as vigilant as we should be. And as you can imagine, that's not just a problem with driving cars or GPSs. It's a problem in healthcare. So what happens when doctors take advice from computers and fail to pay attention? And a classic example that we know about in our world is when the computer tells the doctor 
to, to um, prescribe a set of drugs which actually interact and would cause harm to this patient, but the doctor believes the computer. Plenty of examples in the courts of doctors who have done the wrong thing because the computer said to do something or didn't say to do something. Another thing, I think, is this whole issue of de-skilling. So um, I, I was born in an age when there were no smartphones. That was 1870 or something like that. <laughs> and um, we would remember telephone numbers of our friends. Do you remember that? <laughs> Nobody remembers a telephone number because you have de-skilled. That is now something the phone does for you. So it's very clear that our skills in healthcare will change. The skills that it took to be a decent doctor 100 years ago are not the skills you use today. And with AI coming, the skills will be different again in 20, 50, 100 years' time. So this is just the natural order of events, but it does change what goes on. So let me sort of summarise where I think we are at. Um, I'm personally very excited. I think AI really is tremendously important. In partnership with humans, it's going to make a big difference. We're going to be better at diagnosis, at treatment. Uh, we're going to have a smarter, more agile, safer healthcare system. Absolutely, we will. But doctors are going to need to keep their hands on the wheel for an awful long time. Um, this idea of losing medical jobs, at least for the foreseeable future, isn't real. What will happen is that work will change. Absolutely, work will change. And that's going to happen for everybody. Doctor, accountant, lawyer, it's coming. I will just leave you with, A, my favourite robot, but B, the thought that if you are a doctor today and you can be replaced by an AI, you probably should. Thank you. <laughs>